One of the little Apple things that annoys me is there's not a nice, simple way to just plug in your iPhone and use it as a cam. Um, you can do it in various ways with AirPlay and video mirroring and IP cams and things like that. But every once in a while, it'd be nice to just be able to plug your stupid phone into QuickTime and put a video down real quick. It turns out there is kind of a way to do it. So while you can't use true USB webcam with your phone, you can plug it into QuickTime and then record a screen capture of your phone. We could use that as a ghetto webcam. But Alex, I hear you say, my phone already records videos. Why the crap would I want to do that? Well, here's the thing. You can bypass your phone's internal memory because you're just using it for the camera and you're recording straight to your Mac's hard disk. Second thing is you can use whatever microphone you have plugged into your system so you don't have to worry about getting one that's compatible with your phone. Third, you don't have to do the sync transfer, image capture, drag over, figure out where it works, blah, 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 all that stuff. And fourth, and I've used this a couple times, you can keep two QuickTime windows open, one with a stream from your phone down in the lower right hand corner, and the other capturing your entire computer monitor screen so you can have like kind of a quickie picture in picture thing without having to do any post editing. Not the best in the world, but it's nice in a pinch. So what we're going to do today is walk through how you can make your own app that's pretty much the dumbest app ever. All it does is it takes what's on the camera and it shows it on the screen. What you need to do is head over to Apple's developer site, register your email as a developer, and then add your phone as a development device or a test device. Download Xcode from the App Store, and then just follow the instructions in the video I'm about to show you. So here's what we're going to do. Let's open up Xcode and we are going to start an Xcode project. It's going to be a single view app. Let's click next, call it something, camera, thing, and save. If you have it all set up right, it's going to give you a provisional profile here. Let it handle that automatically. Device orientation here. We're going to check only landscape left. Then we're going to head over here to the perimeter list and we're going to add a property. So click and scroll down to privacy, camera usage description, and then just say something. I don't care what. Then we're gonna go over to our dumb storyboard thing that I hate, go to our first responder, and under our view, we are going to add another view. and then just increase the size here like that. Then we go into our view controller, and what you're gonna do is, you don't care any of that crap, go to the link below, copy this, and paste it right in. Now let me walk into this real quick. We're importing our UR kit and our UI foundation, or the AV foundation, and that's gonna let us generate our view. We have an outlet for our preview pane here, which is what's gonna be displayed on the screen. Call up session, and then we're going to do most of our work in view did load just to make life easier or harder depending on what the case may be. Grab our capture class, grab the input, start the input, assign the input to the session. Then we're going to grab our preview. That's all standard stuff. And then this is where the annoying stuff comes in. I have it fixed to only do landscape and one orientation because otherwise we have to put in a bunch of code to rotate it each way. If you want to do that, you can go ahead, just do the affine transformations and all that. But we're keeping it simple, so here we go. Then we start it up and print any errors that come up. Down at the bottom, we have a couple other tweaks. We're going to track the orientation changes here, and we're going to report them back to our orientation property. This hides the dumb status bar, so you don't have the clock and the battery and all that. And then we have our auto-rotate. Just say no, leave it how it is. We're fine. Now we want to go back to our storyboard. We're going to control-click on our controller, drag it down to our view, select preview view, and that's going to hook it up here. Then we make sure our phone is selected, and we just hit run. Now it's going to sign it, copy over all the libraries, and then it's going to try to run it on your phone. So when it does, it's going to ask for permission to give access to your phone. Just say yes, and you should be golden. Now to test that out, we're going to make a new movie recording. Then we're going to select our phone as a device.
and you should be up and running. So that's it. It wasn't too bad. The upside is you can plug your camera right in quick time and just record videos. The downside is there's a little bit of a delay. I use an external microphone, as you can see here, and it syncs that up just fine so you don't have to worry about it. It's also not going to record at your full camera's resolution because it's actually recording the screen of your camera. So it's going to be the screen of your camera's resolution, i.e. the bigger your camera, the bigger the video. But until Apple releases proper kernel level USB drivers for the camera, it's about the best we can do with it. But the quality is at least halfway decent if the lighting is right. I'm actually recording with it right now just to show you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful. Go make something awesome.